hello my little pants went back to another fast here on my channel where we're talking about my december wrap up now of course it is in this about to be the second week of january and i still don't have one up and so here we go i have officially realized that my kendall actually does show up kind of nicely on the camera which is weird so we're gonna be using some kendall because i did read um some kendall books but right now i'm gonna go through some sets so i'm gonna read you off um the amount of books i physically read the amount of books i listened to the amount of books that i read on my e my kindle okay so here we go so i listened to one two three four five books as an audiobook i read on my kindle one two three four five six seven books and i read a total of one actual book kindle is just easier it's more um feasible so i think anything works now a lot of those were graphic novels so um audiobooks and graphic novels they kind of weighed out this month i did this month try to reach 100 books i overpassed that goal so that's pretty cool so i did kind of do the whole cheat and go we're here on youtube people still like to say where you whole read a whole bunch of like short graphic novels Yet, I can promise you that all these graphic novels I'm about to tell you about are at least 200 pages or more, so I don't really think I was cheating. It still takes a lot of time to read them, and one of them I read on New Year's, like New Year's Eve. So, we're going to get into this book. I'm in this, not in this book. I'm going to talk about the, well, I have three books here that I have like physical copies of that we're going to talk about. Um, but two book of them one are is not this one, obviously, but it's Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. I don't have the actual book. It's at school. I couldn't bring it home. But um, where you got Order of Things. This is book four. According to my tracking, I gave it four stars. That's lovely. Um, I thought the fourth book was really good, except the beginning was too long and it was just too long for me on notice. Also, it really hurt my, my, my one of my favorite characters of all time, Hermione Granger because of um, the certain things she takes upon in that book. If you guys don't know what Harry Potter is about, I'll very quickly explain it. Um, Harry Potter is about a boy named Harry who gets cursed by a guy named Voldemort when murdering both his parents. He then soon learns when he's like nine, somewhere around there, 12, 12, probably 12, that he is a wizard and he gets taken to the school of Hogwarts where this book is taking place in the fourth year of his year of Hogwarts. Personally, not my favorite, but also I didn't hate it, hate it, just not my favorite. Also, I did watch the movie. The movie was okay as well, which I didn't write down that I watched the movie. Weird. Okay. Now, the actual physical book that I read this month is Rainbow Boys by um, Alex Sanchez. Yep. This is a gay romance written in 2001. I have to preference that because there are a lot of stereotypes in here. Um, a lot of stereotype gay romances. Um, it's about three boys named Nelson, Kyle, and Jason. I was going to say Jason, but I thought I was wrong. And um, they share this unpickable bond because of a group called, Ra um, a group called, Pr no. Oh my gosh, what's the group called? I can't think of it. I think it's Rainbow. I think it's Rainbow. It's Rainbow something. But they all are gay. That's the underlining thing. One likes the other, one falling in love with the other. Um, and there's a beautiful romance blossoming in here between Jason and Kyle. It's really a good reason to read the book. Um, but also, Nelson's kind of annoying, so be prepared for that. But it's very, very short. Won't take you very long to read if you enjoy this. But do know that there's some pretty bad LGBTQ jokes that are not so bad in the early 2000s. And which is the reason why I looked into it. Because it was annoying. If you do want to see me read this, um, I'll of course try to link my 24-hour really fun vlog up there or um when this video is over so that's where i have my whole the next book you can't tell the title of i'm going to try to place the words right here it probably ain't going to work but i'm going to try and that is city of glass by cassandra claire this is city of fallen angels but i need a book to use you know i just feel like that way's better just doesn't that way look better okay we're gonna put them right here now um city of glass which is the third book in the city of bones series or shadow hunter series it is the ending of the first trilogy before we start the new trilogy i read it at the beginning or no towards the end of the month of december i gave city of glass oh i gave that one three stars city of glass i gave th four stars as well um i say ashes is still my favorite out of the three because there's so much changed in between city of bones and city of ashes but this is a very good book 
Shout out to as far as Clary, where her mother is put to sleep due to unspeakable actions, and she has learned that she is a shadow hunter. Wow. And she goes to the Shadow Hunter Academy to learn how to become a shadow hunter, and her and her best friends um, kind of battle some evil. Yeah, okay, I don't, I don't really know. Okay, the first one we're going to talk about is Buffy Season 10. Pretty sure, if I'm not mistaken, yeah, I read the entirety of Buffy Season 10, which is over 700 pages long. And um, it's the 10th season, so if you don't know what Buffy is, I'm going to explain what Buffy is and not really. My opinions on this is that Volume 1 was horrible. I gave it 3 stars. Volume 2, which I read these in three different volumes, by the way. Volume 2, I gave 5 stars. It's probably the best Buffy thing I've read to date. And then Volume 3 was a very, very close second to, like, one of the best Buffy things I've read to date. I'm going to try to scoot a little closer so you can see what I'm holding up here. But this is the cover for Volume 1. Um, I didn't download the rest because my Kindle can only use so much space. But either way, um, I'm going to explain to you what Buffy is, and I'm also going to link up here or um, at the end of this video, my buffy a -thon announcement video, um, where I have the trailer in the first episode. If you want to watch and read this with me this year, it's up to you. Not always. You don't have to. But um, with Buffy the Vampire Slayer, it's a story about a girl named Buffy Summers who is chosen out of a curse people would like to say, yeah, I'm going to say it's a curse, um, to become a slayer, to hunt all the demons and vampires and horrible things in the world that can go hunt and not, go, like, go on at night, like, the things you scare, like, scare you underneath your bed, she's supposed to kill it. She's a high scorer in the first season, she's not by this time, but she's a high scorer in the first season, and she's still trying to figure out the troubles of life, let alone murdering things at night. Um, not really murdering, vanquishing, I guess is the better word. Getting rid of. Um, the 10th season takes place many, many years after that. 10 years. Actually, it's probably even longer than 10 years after that. Because a lot of time jumps and stuff. Um, and she is not a grown adult. And, um, a lot of things go haywire. But also, like, a few items to follow in the series. It's very cute, very funny. I do recommend that you would check out Angel and Faith. It's different. It's a spinoff of season 8 of Angel. Um, and it's season 8 of theirs, or it's season 9, I think, of theirs, and I only recommend you do that, just for a simple fact that there's some spoilers for that season in here. Um, I read it last, a few months ago, so, yeah, okay. So we next book we're going to talk about is a book that I gave two stars, and it's probably one of my least favorite books of the year. And that is Sam Crow, or, of last year, Sam Crow, um, on some Sons of Anarchy, Redwood Original, and the volume one is called Prospect. This follows Jax as a prospect. If you guys don't know what Sons of Anarchy is, a TV show that follows on, it was on FX and went on for seven seasons, eight seasons. It's one of my favorite TV shows of all time with Buffy. They made a spinoff here with a prequel element. I thought it followed his dad. Once you watch the TV show, you'd understand why I was super excited for that, but it didn't. So and it cool. follows Jax when he is younger as a prospect, and the character of Jax is portrayed horribly. I don't even for a second believe this is how Jax would act when he is in this area. Also, he's not with Tara, which is weird, because there's points in the TV show where they say that he's with Tara. You would have to know the characters, understand what I'm talking about. Um, and so there's just a lot of it that was wrong. They used the F word way too many times just because they could. The violence was over impacted because I don't even know why, to be honest with you. And I, there's just a lot about this novel that I really, truly, like, despise. <laughs> I'm not reading the next one. But it's, it's, it's a dishonorable mention for my wrap up, sadly. Alright, I will talk. Um, I'll, I'll get back. What we're going to talk we're, about we're is Spider-Man and Deadpool. This is Spidey Pool, as I like to call it. Um, it's a white cover, and so, like, it's not going to really pop up here on the screen. But I'm sorry about that, but I'm going to hold it up anyways. Spidey so, and Deadpool follows... Deadpool, Wade Wilson, and Peter Parker, Spider-Man, by the way, that's the one we're following here. It's when Peter Parker is a businessman, has owned his company and things like that. And he is to be told by Deadpool, by the devil-ish, devil-esque, that um, you have to murder him and I'll give you a bunch of money. You know, the typical Deadpool, Wade Wilson thing. But the thing here is, Deadpool has no idea Spider-Man is Peter Parker. So he goes to murder Peter Parker, only to fall in love with Spider-Man. Um, a lot of people say he doesn't follow up. I'm on the train. He does. So don't listen to them. They're, they're liars. They're lying to you. I promise. And it's just an adorable romance. I have to say. 
it's so cute but also kind of annoying <laughs> i love them so much together it's one of my favorite like ships out of the whole entire mcu is um spidey pool and things like that um it's just it's amazing i enjoy it so much and there's so much about this romance that i think it's just so quirky and so cool and so funny that i just can't not recommend it to enough people to be honest with you um, if you enjoy comic books, I highly recommend this one in particular. This is all dedicated to Spidey Pool. Um, when I figured out they made them, because I used to find these, like, spreads on the internet of them being super cute together. I'm like, oh, where is this from? And me actually being able to read them in context, it makes them not as funny, because, like, you don't read them, like, on Google when you're looking for ship things. Yeah. Um, I don't know. It was super cute. I highly recommend it. It's probably one of my all-time favorite. It was just so pretty, guys. I loved it so much. All right, we're gonna move The on. last graphic novel that we're gonna be talking about today is Young Avengers by Alan Heinberg. Um, this is the Sidekicks and Family, I think is the second volume. I'm gonna show you Sidekicks um, for picture-wise, but I read both of them this month in the completed collection edition that I don't have anymore, that I borrowed from my library, um, but I did go ahead and purchase them separately because it's too expensive to purchase them together. Um, this follows several different Avengers kids as they become superheroes. It, the reason why I picked it up was because the first gay romance in the MCU is between these two particular characters and then they did um, several other characters from like X-Men and things like that that had blossomed into a gay romance as well. But these were like the two originals and are part of Young Avengers. Um, and honestly, I didn't really like it. I liked the first volume. It was very intriguing and things like that. The first volume is 170 pages. And it was very intriguing and it kept my attention the whole time. But I was also kind of annoyed with it um, in certain aspects and stuff like that. The second volume, which I rated so much lower, the second volume, which is technically the one I read today, if we're going by like, this month, if we're going by actuality. I gave the whole collection five, four stars. So the first one, I think probably rated like a three and a half to four. The third one, the second one was like a three, the 272.75. It was just really annoying and I didn't really enjoy it that much. I have heard there's another series called Young Avengers, also written by another openly gay, act, a good gay writer. And I'm tempted to pick it up and see if that's the one I was looking for. Um, I picked this one up in a whim, and I'm kind of regretting my life choices, but you know what? <laughs> we're here to talk about it, so that's what we're doing. But yeah, I don't really know how I feel about Young Avengers, to be honest with you. If I would recommend it or not, I do know that this is probably where the TV, the series is going, if you watch the movie series. Um, with Phase 4? Phase 5? Phase 4? I'm pretty sure they're going into Young Avengers after Avengers Endgame. But I guess we'll have to soon find out which is one of the reasons why I did read it. But we're gonna All right, on. the last ebook that we're going to be talking about is an actual physical, well, it's an actual book, and that is The Sweetest Kind of Poison by Katie Weismer. I read this towards the end of the month for my second read of the year. I read it back in September. I gave it five stars. The second reread, I gave it five stars. I wish I could rate it higher, to be honest with you. It deserves all of the stars. It's my favorite book of the year, I'm pretty sure and of last year and it is so beautiful it follows a girl who falls in love and then slowly has to come to realization the boy doesn't love her and it's kind of did it he's kind of an asshole and then he and then she realized how she can redeem herself from that and it it's just a cycle um, i'm planning on doing a whole actual review of this sit down review because i think it deserves the attention and i, I want to exploit the attention of the sweetest kind of poison it's a beautiful novel if you love poetry it's a poetry it's written in verse it's just gorgeous and i just i couldn't recommend it enough to be honest with you um and so yeah that's my opinion on this it's a five star read so read, last, two, read and, um, mm, last three books we're going to be talking about they're going to be popping up here on the screen over here so just be prepared for that but we're going to get straight in so guys the first book we're going to be talking about is whiskey in a teacup by reese witherspoon i listened to the audiobook this is a memoir for southern culture which i had no idea when i picked it up i get three stars because i, I think it, it utilized what it was made for which is southern culture um but ultimately i did not like the book i'm not a southernist i grew up in the su the south basically like in kentucky and like um 
Tennessee and things like that. That's where, like, I'm from. So, it makes sense that, like, maybe I'd be attracted to this book. But I honestly read it because I was in a Reese Lawyer's Spring Cake. And it was really short. And it made me want to DNF it at an hour in, which does not happen to me anymore. Um... I read the whole thing and I just didn't like it. Just not my favorite. But if you're into all those different things, also like, I don't know. Um, I don't really know who I recommend it to. Somebody who really wants to know about this. There's a few cool things about Southern culture and things like that that I had no idea that were really interesting, really intriguing. But there's a lot of it that I just didn't really like. So Alright, guys. The next one we're gonna talk about is Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo, which I read at the very, very end of the year towards Christmas time, and that my friend was amazing. The hype is worth it. It's five star read. It's about a girl who gets taken into an interview to go interview Evelyn Hugo who is a famous, very, very, very famous movie actress from old Hollywood. The whole book is written basically in flashbacks of Evelyn's life and it is beautiful, it is gorgeous, and I just don't want to give too much away. You should read it. It's by Taylor Jenkins Reads. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. Can I say it's beautiful again? Because it's beautiful. I literally cannot wait to listen to the audiobook Again, I highly recommend the audiobook. It was gorgeous. All right, we're going to move on to the next one. The next book we're going to be talking about, actually the final book on my list that we finally get to talk about, is The Grown Up by Gilligan Flynn. This is a short story about, I'm not going to really tell you too much about, but it's about a girl trying to figure herself out why a whole bunch of crazy stuff happens. It's very adult, but it's super, it's super good. It's really short. It's only like 80 pages long. So, yeah. But guys, that is what I read this month. Um, I read a total of 15 books, I'm pretty sure. I think we just went through, which is a lot of books. Um, and I was impressed with most of them. I would say my average rating is probably about a four star, maybe a three and a half for this month, which is a pretty good average, I'd say. Um, the longest book I would probably would have read, I was gonna say God with a Fire, but I finished it like right at the end. And so we're gonna have to go with the Seven Husbands of Ellen Hugo for this one. Um, or Buffy combined, because Buffy's are really long. So it's one or the other. Um, and overall, such a good reading month. I do wanna recommend two videos that I'm going to try to um, either remember put up here or um, at the end of this video. Um, the one video is not out yet, so when it does, I'll try to post it or just look for it on my channel. These, I try to read 100 books um, at the end of the year, or try to get to 100 as I, I have like 17 books to go. And so I did a 24 hour readathon right before I left school. So I will link that one, that vlog is up, and the 7 and 7 vlog will be soon coming up as well on my channel within the next like 2 or 3 days. So um, that will of course also be linked, so if you enjoyed this video, please give me a big fat thumbs up, big fat thumbs up. Don't forget to comment down below, hit the subscribe button. I'll see you guys all next time for another beautiful video. And enjoy the vlogs if you're watching them. Bye.